Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we want to talk about blocking TikTok from tracking you. We talked about the story in the Weekly News Roundup this last week, and a lot of people said, oh, I would love to have more details about how to prevent TikTok from tracking you. And you say, I don't use TikTok. I'm never using TikTok. That TikTok is dumb. Concur. The problem is whether you use TikTok or not, TikTok is blo is tracking you unless you actively block it. And this is yet one more problem with big corporate America and all of these things. Of course, this is corporate CCP, which is infinitely worse because I was one of the first people I know of on the Internet to talk about TikTok being owned by a Chinese data analytics and AI firm called ByteDance which is simply collecting data in order to train AI and do whatever kinds of nefarious things the CCP would like to do. And just like Facebook tracks you around the internet, whether or not you have a Facebook account, so does TikTok. And probably most of these other sites do as well. Uh, something to keep in mind. Of course, your big ones right now are Facebook, Google, and TikTok using the tracking pixels. And even government, United States government websites are starting to put tracking pixels. Universities are putting tracking pixels. And what these do is you load into the website. Now, if you've never seen the back end of a website, there's a lot of things going on. And what they started to do uh, with, I think, Facebook, they weren't the first, but they were really the first to popularize it. You could use these tracking pixels where when you load up a web page, all the things in the back end load. And when that occurs, it has to ping off of a server. So Facebook and Google does this. And a, a lot of ad agencies have done this over the years. Again, these are not the first to do it. They've just made it very widespread. And so what happens is you load up a page that has a Facebook tracking pixel on it and your computer, your IP address and everything else they want to grab from that pings that server in order to download that pixel. So it's in almost zero data usage but it pings their server so they can grab information. And then as you go across the internet, they can track your pings across the server because that particular tracking pixel is tied to the individual users and then they can uh, of those websites. And so they can try, they can tag you as a single IP address or other information that they're grabbing and they can track you across the internet. The only way to stop this is to block it, which you can do with extensions. You can do it with host files. You can do it with network blocking. So these are the things that we need to do. So the back end of this is we have done a tutorial on this channel in the past about using a Raspberry Pi and building Pi-hole. And if you attach Pi-hole to your system, you can have a very easy to manage scripting system that's going to block all the connections into your computer with one exception. We'll get into that in a moment. Um, in my case, I don't use the Pi hole because I run PFSense as my router and my router can do that. Uh, so I don't need to worry about any of that. And so the um, and of course, the next way is to use some form of of application or browser extension or things like that. Now, here is where your downside is. Uh, with Firefox is starting to push DNS over HTTPS, and I have been very vocal against this because if you're using something like a pie hole or something like a network level blocking script or even a computer host level blocking script, DNS over HTTPS is going to override that and allow the tracking pixels to continue to track you. This is why I do not like DNS over HTTPS. Now, is it totally useless? No, because I have my whole system blocks Facebook and all those fa Facebook resources that blocks Google Analytics. Uh, so people do not include my site visits on their analytics reports. Um, I am now blocking TikTok as of today. Uh, I think my host files will update every 12 hours. So some point in time today, my host files are going to, to update and I will be blocking all TikTok related stuff after today. And so basically, uh, if I, if I need to do work on a client website on Facebook, and there's one client that I unfortunately have to do that now, I enable DNS over HTTPS on one particular browser on one particular computer, allowing me to bust out of my firewall, but that browser is considered compromised but it allows me to do things without messing with a bunch of other stuff. 
Now, with this being said, um, the best way, in my opinion, to do this is if you just have a one or two computers is to do a hosts file block. Here's the reason. If you're using a browser extension that says we're going to block all these tracking domains, that's great when you're surfing the web. But many applications can now download these tracking pixels as well. There are resources inside of these applications that are going to allow you to see who's using it based on a variety of APIs, data scripts, and things like this. A browser extension does not stop that. A host file or a network level blocking is going to prevent that. And so I use the network blocking stuff as a primary. Now, if I wanted to make sure I had more fine control over that one compromised browser, I could use a browser extension because in general, even if you're using DNS over HTTPS, to my knowledge, please correct me if I'm wrong, but to my knowledge, if you're using DNS over HTTPS, a browser extension will still block those if the browser extension is working appropriately. I believe that is going to be the case. Now, I've talked in detail about DNS over HTTPS in the past. I've talked again about the tutorial for Pi-hole. Might need updated at this point in time, but we'll get to it, and that tutorial is still pretty good. Um, but um, today we're going to talk about how to find and collect your scripts. Of course, I have one on my website, and for those that have known about that in the past, I have just updated that today. That script on my website, I'll provide you a link for it at the end here will block all Facebook stuff I know of. Now, there's one thing I cannot find anything, uh, information on, and if you guys in the community can point me towards the resources, please let me know. Has Facebook changed their tracking pixels to be something more relevant to Meta instead, or are they still using the old Facebook domains? I can find zero reference to that anywhere on the Internet. So as of right now, we're blocking the old style of Facebook. We're blocking... Um, TikTok, we're blocking Bitcoin miners, and I'm blocking more session replay than I've ever seen blocked. I spent a couple, uh, I spent a couple days digging through a lot of session replay. Of course, this is the thing that tracks you across your screen when something loads. It basically is the screen capture stuff that can see what is going on uh, and stuff like that. And so, uh, those are the. Those are the things that I block in mind that I haven't seen blocked anywhere else. Also, as regarding my script, I updated it from the old script I used to updated using Stephen Black's block list now because his is regularly active and constantly updated. The script I was using had not been updated in over a year. And so hopefully that will uh, block more ad resources on our networks. Uh, so that's just a little bit. But let's go ahead and dive on into how to block this stuff. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is... We are going to look for uh, what we want to block on uh, the domain level. And we're going to use a hosts file. And we're just going to make entries to our host file. Or if you're using a pie hole, you're adding it to the block lists. Or if you are using a, uh, like I'm using uh, PFSense, which is going to automatically download my script every 12 hours and update its block list systems, uh, then all that stuff is going to work however you're doing that. You basically need the exact same list in each case. And that is going to be a list that has a string of numbers. It's going to look like this one here. Um, so you either use 0, 0, 0, 0, or the old way to do it was 127.0.0.1. That stopped working on Windows 10 systems a while ago and would break the internet. For whatever reason, nobody knows. But 0000, 0, 0, 0 works across the internet. Now, I did see some references that Mac might have changed that, and I did not get a chance to look into it. So if you are using a Mac then uh, there may be some extra steps here or a different format of this file. I'm not 100% sure yet. I did not have time to look into it. But for Linux and Windows, this still works. And I think for older Macs, this still works. Basically, what we're looking at here is the first is the, ad, is the override address. And the second is the website. In this case, it's an IP address. So I'm guessing this 16134 and 47 IP block D is something related to TikTok. This is one of the larger TikTok blocking scripts. You can see that this is going to a TikTok content delivery system. Uh, we can see TikTok.com is in here. 
Uh, we can see v6m.tiktokcdn.com. So basically, this is blocking not only TikTok, but their content delivery networks. This one's interesting. Biteoversea.net. So this is like Byte Dance collecting things from overseas, which overseas is us. <laughs> okay. Um so you can see a lot of reference to that. And the one I wanted to make sure was in here is analytics.tiktok.com. And you can see that analytics.tiktok.com is in this list. As long as that was there, I was okay with that. Why did I want to pick out analytics.tiktok.com? Because if you head to ads.tiktok.com, which is the, uh, this is the system. Oh, they're website is horrible on this size. There it is. Okay. This is the system that teaches you how to, as a web developer, how to add the tracking pixel into your website in order to track users and utilize TikTok's domain system or TikTok's analytics dashboard to test your effectiveness of reaching your target audience with TikTok. And so the first thing you need to do is create your TikTok pixel. They walk you through all of that collect the cookie consents, of course, and they need to install the pixel. So this is being installed with a JavaScript line. So a JavaScript blocker may block some of this, but it kind of depends on how the thing all works. But what they're loading here is this URL. All right. Now this URL is loading the, this is the actual JavaScript, which is doing the events tracking, which is coming from analytics.tiktok.com. So if this website cannot be reached, the entire analytics measurement tools will fail. And so that's why we're blocking analytics.tiktok.com. So you're going to add the pixel code there. And then once the pixel code is in there, um, then that's going to um, uh, that's going to track you across the Internet. So what we're going to do is we're going to actively block such things. So I found this list here, which is a uh, blocking script that's actually comes from here. What I did is doing a GitHub search. I looked for TikTok blocker and there are four hits that show up. We have a social media block lists. Um, this is a social media DNS block list for Pi-hole. We have a bad domain, bad domain, uh, just uh, a topping host file that blocks anything bad. Uh, we have a Pi-hole blocking TikTok, and we have a social media block list. All right, so uh, looking at these guys here, this one, I believe, is this one. So let's go ahead and open this up. And then, so this is Dan Horton. And then he has the license, the README, and he has the uh, the TikTok.txt. This is the file we were just looking at. So basically what I did is I verified that a few domains I knew about were on here. And I took this file here and I copied it over. I should have put a link to this at the top and I did not. I've When I get the next update in, I will make sure I get that in there. But that comes from the... Um, TikTok blocking scripts. The next one I want to look at was the social media block lists, uh, which in theory is a little bit bigger, better. But what this one is here is we have uh, various ad networks for Facebook. Oh, I don't have Instagram in mine. I should look into that. Here's Netflix. Here's Reddit. So these are just doing various blocking scripts for a variety of different things. So if I want to click on the TikTok one here, uh, I can see what all they're blocking. <clears throat> So they have a number of IP addresses, some of the same IP addresses, the 161 and the 47 blocks. Um, they have TikTok.com. I don't see analytics.tiktok.com, so I'd be a little bit more cautious about that one there. But it'd be worth looking at all these scripts to decide what you'd like to do. Here's the Facebook one. This one actually looks pretty good, based on what I recall. And then here is uh, the last one, as I mentioned, uh, Stephen Black uh, has a list of uh, blocking scripts. And I like his because he does keep his fairly up to date. Um, let's see. Last update was October 9th. So I'm recording this October 12th. So this script is only a few days old. And you can see that the host file size is drastically going up because of the number of spam. But what I like about his is if you don't want to use what I'm doing, his site here is one of the best because he has um, his raw file. Uh, he calls it the unified host, which is adware and malware. 
There's 152,000 domains. But then he has a plus fake news. He has a plus gambling. He has a plus porn, plus social. He has a fake news plus gambling, fake news plus porn, fake news plus social. Basically all these different things. What I did for mine is I grabbed this one here, and I did have a link back to his website in mine. Uh, so if you can find it again. And uh, he has two, uh, 210,000 plus and this is his unified host, fake news, gambling, porn, and social. And so these should work uh, everywhere across the list. So he does not have the Mac warning that I saw in the other one. Um, that might be maybe Mac also is, requires a 0000. As I said, I haven't looked into that yet. Uh, but I grabbed this, and then what I did is I added a few extras onto mine. Whoops, I pushed the wrong button there. All right, so let's go ahead and show you what mine looks like now. So this is mine. Now I have the Facebook block separate. Um, I'm not. Sh I'm pretty sure these are probably in his, but I didn't double check these. But these are everything I know with Facebook. These are the session replay, which I found a lot of my session replay are not actually in Stephen Black's list. But I did a lot of research tracking down all the different session replays. Some of these are like on audience is in his and Clicktail is in his blocking script. Uh, but a lot of the other ones in here that I spot checked are not. And so um, I have this to block all session replay I know about on my network. Uh, so you can download this file for yours as well. And then here's all the TikTok domains. Uh, that's the one I should probably put a reference to where I got that from. Um, and I'll go ahead and link it in the description of this video uh, in the meantime. So that's a lot of there. And then, whoa, there's a lot there. Did I actually move beyond it? I might have moved beyond it and got into Stephen Black's list. Um, no, next. There you go. Uh, so this starts Stephen Block, uh, Stephen Black's block list. So I basically took his and put that in my whole system. And there's just a ton of things down there. And then you can actually sort through. Here's dating sites. Um, here's Clubhouse. Here's uh, some more specific ones to TikTok. Not as many as we have. Here's Tumblr. Um, here's Reddit. Pinterest. So I'll, I'll have to actually, MySpace. Wow. MySpace still exists. All right. Uh, so all these guys are now in there. And what I generally do is if I, I find if there's any issues or whatever else that, um, I want to, uh, that I want to block or whatever else then, uh, or, if, or if something's blocking that something I don't want it to block, I'll actually go through and whitelist it in my system later. All right. So how do you actually deploy this? Well, on Linux, you're going to boot up a terminal and, in your terminal, uh, you're going to boot up, and I use Nano, you can use Vi or Vim, whatever you want to use. Um, you are going to want to do this as a super user, so let's do sudo nano, and we're going to go Etsy and hosts. All right, so enter your password here. And the first few lines of this, make sure you keep these lines here, that's going to prevent your system from you know breaking. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to copy this script in. Now in the terminal, this is going to take a while, so I'm not copying everything. I'm just going to copy the Facebook block scripts. I'm just going to go ahead and paste those in so that those are now in here. So now even if my network fails, uh, I'll still be blocking everything related to Facebook. So maybe I should do the same with TikTok. But uh, um, basically you're just going to copy and paste it in. Of course, if you do it, uh, if it's taking you a long, long time, it will take a few minutes to paste this much text into your host file. So just wait patient for it, save it, and you're done. That's all it takes. Now this is on Linux, any Linux system, Etsy hosts, um, Android, you can do this on Android. If you have something where you can access the file structure, like using an ADB root on a lineage device. So I actually have this thing deployed across my, uh, Android phone as well. And, um, the, uh, on windows, you're going to go into, see if I can remember what it is. I think it's system 32. I think it's system 32 drivers hosts. I could be wrong about that. I forget. I'll go ahead and find an article um, about how to do it on Mac. Mac actually just uses the terminal. So just use this for Mac and Linux. And then on Windows, uh, you need to find the, the hosts. I think it's in System32 Drivers 
hosts or driver Etsy hosts. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out and figure out what it is. And I'll quit link an article to it. There's some great Tom's Hardware articles about it. Uh, I'll go ahead and put those in the um, uh, in the description down below. So with that, hopefully that has helped you to figure out how to block um, how to block Facebook on uh, or excuse me, blocking TikTok on your network. Uh, and, uh, oh, of course I did mention, I was going to tell you where to find that site on my end. And so that's over on the website, switch to links.com slash privacy dash resources. Of course, I will be updating my website here very, very soon. This page will remain on there. I just don't, I'm not sure if the URL is going to change on that. I may or may not. Um, but down here, um, there, I have a number of different articles here. The one that says get the hosts file is the one that, uh, we should be, be using. I have one specific for just session replay as well. That's the one up there. And then there's just a few other things over there as well. So switchlinks.com dash uh, slash privacy dash resources is where you're going to find this guy over here. Thanks for watching everybody. And we will see you next time. Thank you for watching this video from switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.